Holy crap, it's the new Evolutive Labs solid suit. Now, if you've been watching my channel for several years, you'll know that I absolutely fell in love with the original solid suits. Do I have the same weepy feelings like I did with the new solid suits? Mostly no, because they don't handle as well as the original leather solid suit, but that's a mute point since the leather case has never really made it into mass production. But that shouldn't stop you from buying one of the newer solid suits because these are really nice cases and they're also quite tough. In fact, the foremost thought that comes to my mind when I'm using these solid suits is, damn, these are nice buttons. And when it comes to toughness, yes, there aren't many cases that I feel comfortable doing whatever I'm gonna do in this clip. Yes, that's a solid suit between a hammer and a nail. As of right now, the solid suit is number three on my top 10 list out of the 320 something cases I've reviewed so far. So it's a very, very good case. In general, Evolutive Matt Labs makes some decent cases. Uh, so they're definitely worth checking out. I will do a quick comparison between all of their products towards the end of the video, but I'll do that after I talk about the design, functionality, and protection that the solid suit is going to offer your iPhone. So let's get started. Real usage, real reviews. Mobile reviews a dot ca. At Mobile Reviews, a Monty and I base all our reviews on our experiences with the products in our daily lives. Evolutive Labs sent Monty and I so many different solid suits, I honestly had trouble trying to figure out which one to use every single day. There's one in this group that's my favorite, and as I said before, damn, these are nice buttons. When it comes to design, the solid suits are quite similar to the mod and the crash guard. In fact, the edges of the cases look almost identical. Can you see the difference between the cases in this uh, side shot? It's hard to tell, but the solid suit is actually the thicker one. Rhino Geo cases are made from a material called shock spread, which isn't your normal run of the mill TPU. According to Evolutive Labs, the material is slim and tough, which means that their cases are going to be smaller and lighter than similar cases like the Catalyst Impact Protection and the Mouse Luminous. Both these cases offer the same amount of protection, but are a little larger. Now I do have to point out the fact that the product doesn't come uh, contain any BPAs, BPSs, or BPFs, which we all know are harmful products. I find this humorous because the biggest health problem when I think of uh, smartphone phones is radiation. I haven't given much thought to the plastic in cases, um, as I don't really like my phones, but ever since I had a kid, well, they love putting things in their mouths. The solid suits in general won't add a lot of bulk to your iPhone, which is nice given the amount of protection it offers. Now, the biggest difference between the solid suit and the mod and the crash guard is the material on the back of the case. Your choices include a normal plastic back, which is kind of boring. Several different wood backs, which include a black oak, a dark walnut, and a light walnut. I personally like the white case and the white light walnut. It looks really nice in my opinion. A carbon fiber back, a leather back, a couple of different leather backs actually, and my personal favorite, the microfiber cloth back. Now, the microfiber cloth back stands out to me because it's just different. If you watch some of my latest videos, you'll notice that I've been on a not wood TPU or plastic kick. Honestly, my iPhone feels better in the microfiber cloth back than other cases. The solid suit fits tightly around the iPhone and is actually quite hard to take off, but that's kind of a good thing. The buttons on the case, damn buttons, are customizable and despite not being physically attached, the case aren't loose and don't shake around. If you're looking to differentiate your iPhone slightly, get a set of colored buttons when you order your solid set. I personally prefer the tiny pops of color rather than the overall over the top designs of other build your own case products. Now I know when it comes to buttons on cases, manufacturers spend a lot of time trying to get the button feel right, we'll say. Uh, a lot of these TPU molded cases, they will keep thinning out the button areas until they get to a point where they feel comfortable. And so this is a very time consuming iterative process because you can't re-add uh, TPU to the case, I don't think, so you just have to keep shaving it off until you get it right. Lately, I've seen a lot of companies remove parts of the case to ensure that the buttons fit better. An example of this would be the buttons on the most limitless. The, bo the buttons are close, but they aren't the same. None of them have really figured out what Evolutive Labs has done with their buttons on their products. The solid suit actually slides around less than the mod and the crash guard, which is a good thing, mostly because there's a bit of texture on the back of the case. But that doesn't hold back my biggest complaint with the solid suit is that the edges are a little slick for my liking. I generally have dry hands, so cases tend to slip out of my hands easily. The solid suit does have a matte texture on the edges, but again, it's not enough for me to say that, that's, that this grip is good. I noticed during my day-to-day -day usage, my fingers actually spent a lot of time along the case edge where Rhino Shield stamped their logo and the two holes for the wrist strap is. And yes, it can 
can take a wrist strap, which kind of mitigates some of the slipperiness of the case. The handling of the case will also be affected by the material that you choose. The carbon fiber back from my perspective offers the most texture for your hands, followed by the microfiber case. Leather cases aren't too bad, and the normal and wood cases offer the least amount of texture. The wear and tear of the case isn't better or worse when compared to other Evolutive uh, products. The plastic will show signs of wear and tear depending on where you drop it. The, the sidewalk in front of my house will leave some nasty scuff marks. This case that I'm showing you right now is the uh, case that I did all the drops in. So it doesn't look terrible. And yes, that is a gouge from a hammer. Now, when it comes to accessing your iPhone inside the solid suit, again, damn, the buttons are just so nice. I can't, I can't stop talking about them. Honestly, the button response makes it feel like there isn't a case at all, which is something I can't say for 99.9% .9 of the other products that I've reviewed. The mute switch is easily accessible through the larger than average cutout, and the lightning cable cutout is large enough for whatever third-party cable you plan on using. Camera is uninhibited and like the mod, can be used with an iPhone N's lens adapter. One of the reasons why I love the mod is the fact that you can turn that case into a camera case, a high quality camera case, and you can do the same thing with the solid suit. Now, when it comes to camera cases, I generally have two issues. The first is that manufacturers with great lenses oftentimes have cases that are subpar. The second issue I have is that manufacturers who try to design a decent case will use average quality lenses. I don't have either of these issues with the Rhino Shield solid suit. It works great as a regular case and also works great as a camera case. Now with the mod, you get a choice of several different lenses. There's a 0.6x HD wide angle, a 2-in-1 macro plus 0.65x wide angle, a fish eye lens, and a super wide angle lens. Now if you're planning on getting just one lens, get the wide angle 0.68 lens. It doesn't unseat my current favorite wide angle lens from Excellence, but it comes really, really close. If you need to see a full comparison between each one of these lenses, along with a comparison between other high quality lenses from Exo lens, normal lenses from all clip and hit case, and well, there's a tireless one. So I do check out that video I did for the mod. I could regurgitate everything, but I won't. Just go check that out in that video. I will note that half the footage that I used with all the protection and drop tests was actually shot on an iPhone 8 Plus with the 0.6x HD wide angle lens on it. Now for screen protection, the lip of the solid suit is quite high, so it will keep your screen off a flat surface. However, drops on an even surface will still be an issue. So if you think that's gonna to happen to you, yeah, go get a screen protector. I've had a lot of success with their uh, impact protection screen protector. Uh, if you're looking for something that's glass, uh, go with their 9H tempered glass screen protector. And I've had people ask me, well, I wanna get this case, but I don't want their screen protector. Just get their screen protector. It, you'll know that it fits. Like you just, there's no doubt about it. You'll just put it on and it'll just fit. When it comes to drop protection, shock spread material is theoretically pretty tough especially if you've been watching some of Ronald Shield's uh, products you'll see them drop it from like 25 feet at some point in time I think terminal terminal velocity comes in and no matter how high you drop it it's not going to break if it doesn't break past like a certain feet certain amount like 11 feet maybe I don't know if you want to see the full gannet 11 foot drops I do check out the Rhino Shield mod video review that I did. I'm not going to go regurgitate everything again, kind of like the camera lenses, because there's kind of no point. You could just go do that video and watch it. Now, with that being said, I decided to do something different with the, uh, the solid suit, and that involved using Gemma, my hammer. Before we get to all that ridiculousness, I will add that this video is unsponsored by Evoluto Labs. They did send me the cases, but the iPhone that I'm about to uh, show you gets mauled um, came out of my own pocket. So uh, if you're finding this video useful, consider getting all your stuff through my Amazon links as that's pretty much the only way I can support this channel and myself. Now, first of all, when it comes to protection, pay attention to the sound of the case and the impacts. There is a satisfying thud with every impact. Most cases during their impacts have a higher sound, but the solid suit have a duller thud. And it actually sounds a lot tougher. Like I have no problems constantly bashing my phone. Um, next thing I did to it, yes, that's me hammering the edge of the case because well, why wouldn't you do that? That's a totally normal thing to do. Now, as I said earlier, the edges could have a bit more texture on the case, but given how tough this case is, you can afford to drop it a few more times, you know, like for those accidents when you jump up to test your newly installed pull-up bar only to have your iPhone fall out of your pocket. And yes, that's me hammering a nail into wood through the solid suit. And after that, I took it off and again, iPhone still looks fine. The face first drop from five feet on concrete again, this was not surprising. If this was a gravel road, maybe you'd be a uh, crap out of luck and the edges of the case would be too shallow for the rocks. But for normal day face-to-face -face drops on the flat surface, your uh, iPhone's gonna be fine in this case. I decided to go with uh, putting another nail into wood with the solid suit because this is just, 
This is just crazy. This is fun. I don't know. I just had a lot of fun doing this. Now I did get a little bored towards the end, so I went with more hammering, but this time, though it doesn't look like it, I am going as hard as I can on the edge of the case. Now the hammer I'm using, the only hammer I own is actually very small, so you don't get a lot of leverage out of it, but watch how high the wood on my uh, working surface bounces up. Like, I'm going at it pretty hard, and well, did the iPhone bend? It did, nothing cracked, and I actually had to do a triple take on the edge of the case because, well, nothing really bent or it the bend didn't look that bad uh, but enough it bent enough for me to warrant to replace my iPhone 10 there was a part of me who was expecting the iPhone 10 to survive but I'm not really fussed as the average person is definitely not going to cause repeated heavy impacts against the same spot on the case again any normal person this case will protect your iPhone from whatever you decide to do on a day-to-day -day basis now the final thing I decided to do with the iPhone X that I bent was to drop it face first from five feet uh, a bunch of times well, until it, I decided until the screen broke and that actually only took two attempts. Now this is not surprising to me given that the iPhone that I dropped, the area that where the screen made contact with the ground was way thicker because well of the dents that I put in with the hammer with Gemma. But here's the thing is that if you're completely concerned about your uh, iPhone screen, just go get a screen protector. So what's the difference between your crash guard, your solid suit, and your mod? Well, the uh, crash guard, let's start with the crash guard. It's the simplest one. It's just a bumper. Uh, the buttons are removable, so you could add a bit of pop to your uh, crash guard, but for the most part, it's just a bumper. Uh, so it's if you just need something tough, minimalist, and you don't want a full case, go with the crash guard. I will say that taking the crash guard off of my uh, iPhone 10 is really, really tough, so, uh, you know, just, just be warned. Just, I'm just warning you that. Now, if you're looking for the ultimate flexibility in terms of customizing your case, then you're gonna go with the mod because you can customize the colors of the buttons. You can customize the color of the rim. You can turn it between a normal full-on case and a bumper. And so you've got all these things that you can mix and match with the mod, which is good for people who just every once in a while need slight, something slightly different on their iPhone. Uh, there's also still the camera attachment thing. So, you know, there's just, it's basically, with the mod you're getting three different cases. You're getting a bumper, you're getting a regular case, and you're getting a camera case. And so, if you need that absolute flexibility, then go with the mod. The mod also allows you, the mod plates are a lot flashier, we'll say. There's a lot of different colors, there's a lot of different things you can do with that product. So if you don't need to be, if you don't need your iPhone to look too subtle, uh, then definitely go with the uh, mod. Now the solid suit, I know I've been talking a lot about the solid suit. The last thing I will say about the solid suit is that it is less flashier than your mod. And I kind of think of it about the solid suit as an actual suit. If you look at most suits from a distance, you kind of don't notice any differences between them. The thing that you will, the thing that draws your eye the most is going to be the color of the tie or the bow tie and the uh, pocket square. And so, you know, to customize the look of your suit, you're going to go focus on, you know, the color of your tie. You're going to make maybe your tie pop, which kind of sets you apart from everybody else. And that's kind of the same thing with the buttons is that it's a very subtle difference, right? You can definitely make your iPhone pop uh, while maintaining the uh, very premium, very professional look of the uh, solid suit. So that's kind of the quick breakdown of all the different cases that uh, Evolutive Labs makes. Again, if you found this video useful, considering getting anything through Amazon, because this video was not sponsored by them. Um, I didn't actually ask them to sponsor this. I just went and did it. They did send me the cases, which is awesome of them, but the iPhone that you saw me trash, yeah, that came out of my own pocket. Um, if you want, if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe. Yes, Monty is wearing a doggy jersey. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Right, buddy?